Have we got primary school teachers here? Wonderful. You're the most important. <laughs> okay. um, I'll, I'll try to explain why. Okay. Um, first, I, I'll go through what we got from the questionnaires, the results of the questionnaires. Although I think I've emailed you the actual report. Yeah. Okay. But I'd just like to know if you've got any comments on it as we go through it. And then we'll go through some questions, which are these ones up here. We asked you what what was the phrase? What language teaching methodology is dominant in your institution? So it wasn't really a question about your preferences, it's about what you see happening around you. And these are the results that we've got. Um, you can see there are actually five categories, there's only three written now, I have to fix that up. Uh, now, the point to be made is that these things we took from a, an encyclopedia. So we didn't invent the names. We just threw out a, a set of names and said, which ones do you respond positively to? And we've and, and if it was less than 50%, percent we taken them out. So we had the American Army method. I have nothing against the American Army, but it disappeared, okay? And other things. What's left is interesting because immersion is really high. This is much higher than the international global survey that we did. And it's also, without much doubt, it's either positively or very positively. Okay? Uh, followed by communicative over there, which is similar but not as high as, as immersion. So I'm, my first question is, what do you, people in, in the questionnaire, what do you understand by immersion? We just threw out a term, so, and then you said, yeah, immersion, yeah. So what is it for you? You can't be wrong. But do you have any ideas of what, where does this come from? What does it mean? What, what is this immersion methodology? Mm -hmm. Immersion, as I understand, is using English to teach uh, curriculum in subjects like history, geography, and uh, maths. Really? Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. But what was the question for this? What, is, what does immersion mean? No, no, what was the question for this particular result? What methods? Uh, what methods do you think are dominant in the institution? The one asking what do you do or what do you prefer, what do you think is dominant? And, and that is this institution? No, these are primary schools, secondary schools. Or are are they teaching immersion in English? Probably yes. pattern in one. Or immersion in English. Uh, some of the people answered the questionnaire were teaching Catalan to foreign, or to speakers of Spanish and speakers of other other uh, ones, and they were very high on immersion. But see, using okay, using English to teach geography, I would call that content-based teaching. You can call it whatever your football team. But is that immersion for you, Ridley? No. We understand it the same way. What is I think the general idea for immersion is just teaching the whole hour in English, so that you're not using Spanish. I mean, if you ask to give a quick answer, okay, yeah. so you say immersion, teaching in English, the whole hour. English it has nothing to do okay. with the exclusion of L1 yeah. is immersion. Yeah. Exclusion of L1. Yeah. 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 The language of the yeah. is English. And how much so? The language of the whole uh, learning community. So not only in class teaching science. Because the other question would be how many groups are using TIP, in fact. Because very few too. Using what? Uh, content language, integrated learning. Right. Okay, so very few. But that groups. wasn't the question. The question is no, what do you see? But now that this could explain why it's so high here. If some people think that mm -hmm. using English as a vehicle language. Yes. Is is immersion, mm -hmm. then we've got two things in one. Yeah. Is that, it, yeah, and that's a very serious problem throughout our study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and that's really also, why we need this group. It also contrasts because in primary, not all teachers teach English, not content, not, not a subject, but English, uh, using English 100% time. So then I'm a bit shocked about the immersion uh, the question was, what do you do? Thing, yeah. 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 Uh, it's about what, what, what do you see around you? Because yeah. we, we didn't want people 
saying what they thought they should say, if you like, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it was referred to English. No, no, no. Just to language? We just referred to L1, L2. Okay. Because we've got people answering this for teaching Catalan, and for teaching Spanish as well. And that's what we got the English so far. From where? From Catalan. I thought so. But then you've given me a second reason. I would, I would answer the same thing. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Say something like the International Baccalaureate, you consider that an emotion for them? What's the International Baccalaureate? It stands in English. Yeah. So we've taken three A levels and three subsidiaries. We take uh, um, three, uh, three, uh, three subjects, a subsidiary, three at higher level, and then they are entirely taught in English. Uh -huh. Um, there's a couple, I think there's a school here, and the international school that's a new school opened recently here, which they do with the international baccalaureate. Yeah, it's the European schools mm -hmm. model, which is based on immersion of native teachers. And, uh, but, and, okay, but we've got a real problem here because we don't know what that big bar for immersion represents. <laughs> Probably what they say, platinum. Okay, let's see. Primary school teachers were the ones who put most immersion and least translation. This is why I'm really interested in primary school teachers. So, for you, immersion is no. just using L2, using L2 in the classroom, yeah? And in and out classroom as well. Okay. In the yeah. playground, lunchtime, the corridors, and we don't do that. Yeah. No, we Good. don't do it. You don't do it, okay. So okay. that's why I'm shocked with okay. the result. And what about you? Well, uh, I'm some boys and I teach different groups of people, really, but I um, mean, I find immersion, this is the opinion of the people general. generally. In, uh, people believe that total immersion, if you find yourself in the surrounding, English speaking surrounding, then you just pick up the language immediately, mm -hmm. which is not always true, and I, I do, I'm a, a fan of translation. I find it very useful, personally. Okay, we'll come to that in a minute. <laughs> uh, does anybody else here uh, think that the term immersion, it covers using English to teach geography, for example? Okay. Surprisingly, we're, we're, we're <laughs> we got over that hurdle all. <laughs> Could it be, and this I think I even put this in the report, that, that the the methods that, that are privileged for teaching Catalan to lead speakers of other language, Catalonia, sort of spilled spill over here in our methodology or in the terminology you use. Mm. But if you think about what they usually mean when they say immersion linguistica, mm. that's sort of the standard um, mm. system that is used in primary and yeah. um, schools here. It's called immersion linguistica because the Majority of the courses are taught in Catalan. That's right. So that's probably what people understand when they're <coughs> immersion. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that the student is surrounded by English or <coughs> whatever L2 outside the classroom, but as long as most of the structure in the classroom is done in the language, I think most people would think that that's immersion. Yeah. John, I think we think we've got a full house. If we go around and just say who you are, where you work, so we know each other, okay? And then confess which of these methodologies you privilege in your own work. Starting with David. With me? Yeah. Okay, I work here actually, yeah. and I, I don't teach yeah. language, but I think that the visual language teaching method is something I apply. I teach translation actually, and that's the only one I use. Okay. All of these ones. Fair enough. Let's. Move on this way. Um, I'm doing master here with Mark. Your name? I'm um, Hai Jin. Okay. I'm from China. Okay. And uh, I was an interpreter in China and, uh, and the English teacher too. I used, um, most cases, I used uh, grammar translation methods. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, there are li only a little bit um, similarity between Chinese and English, especially grammatical uh, items. So. Course, it's in order to make students understand them better, so we use grammatical translation. Good, thank you. I use the communicative language teaching. Your name, sorry? Lucia. Okay. And with primary children, and also the, the task based learning. Good, what do you understand by task based learning? And different, different exercises 
Um, okay, we'll come, we'll come back. Uh, I'm Bill Black, I'm not Polish, I'm sent, as I said, I'm self-employed, and I use Kaminska for language teaching and grammar translation. Good. Well, I'm Patricia, I work in CITES as a primary teacher, and I mainly use Kaminska language teaching and task-based learning, meaning working on projects where you have a final task they have to do. To, to, to present in which they use the language. Okay, is that what you want to start? No, that's You're that's very happy there. But, yeah. I am Laina, I work in that, I'm a primary school teacher as well, and I mainly use community language teaching and task based learning. Yes. Yeah, maybe yeah. content language and integrated. Integrated. Content language and integrated. Yes, yeah, so clear. Clear. Yeah, clear. Yeah, clear. Uh, my name is Javier, I'm Javier, and I teach in a private school. And to tell you the truth, I don't know which method I use. Yeah, it depends mm -hmm. on because the I think I already prepared kids, you know, and youngsters to pass exams. So the birth certificate, the advance, <laughs> whatever, or the training, I don't know what, and whatever. But in the exam preparation method, yeah. I, think, I think they tend to approach something like a communicative mm -hmm. language mm -hmm. teaching. Everything was every activity, there's some speaking, some things, whatever, but I'm not entirely sure. Sorry, you're in? Me, yes. Um, what methods? Well, we are supposed to, well, I suppose that I use immersion methods, not clear, but um, um, we use English all the time, <coughs> or we should here at the department. I've also used, used task based uh, teaching. Else, probably. Can you ask me too? Yeah. yeah please still then. Uh, my name's Anthony. I've taught English for too long. I don't think I ever used um, L1 in the English class, you know. Yeah. So I would have to put communicative and or immersion depending on yeah. what you mean. Okay. I never used translation very soon. Yeah. Never. Never. Yeah. I was taught not to. <laughs> My name is Monte, I'm a primary school teacher too. And I mainly use uh, communicative language teaching. And it depends on the sessions and it depends on the groups. I use task based learning and also TPR. With the yeah. little ones, super yeah. physical yeah. schools. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with the, with the young ones. Yeah. So, <laughs> so other people. It depends, yeah, it depends on the group. Yeah, that does <laughs> pretty well. Yeah, it's difficult to... Yes, my name is Alberto, and uh, I'm doing a PhD now at the English department with Mark. I'm not teaching at the moment, but when I used to, probably as Javier, as that was your name, uh, I was preparing students for all the official levels, so it may be communicative because I mainly used or try to use a tool in my classes and maybe in my shows. Yeah. Okay, Fiona in London asks us to speak a bit louder. We can. Okay. She's hearing us through there, so. Yes. Hi, my name is Anneli Nazuki. I'm from Turkey. I teach in a police vocational school. And uh, the fact that I generally teach in very crowded um, classes consisting of 55 students. I mostly use the grammar translation method, but in the cases that uh, I teach sometimes seven or eight students in my class, that is the communicative language teaching method. Good. My name is Isabel, I teach here grammar, uh, so grammar. <laughs> and when I've taught the language courses, I've so German or English, I've, I've used uh, a mixture of um, uh, methods here. So uh, the communicative, the audiovisual, um, and the task-based is an end grammar. My name is Doya, and my experience with English teaching has to do with minority language students. Uh, the methods I used to use the main word a little bit of everything, but most communicative, bilingual, but never grammar translation. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sara. I teach uh, language 
well, English language here at the university, and I mostly use communicative language teaching. And if you consider speaking in English all the time, no translation whatsoever, then I also use emoji. Mm -hmm. I am Elena, I am teaching writing at the moment, writing uh, subjects, which is a task in itself, and uh, we write to communicate, so it's rather communicative, and any subtask which might be useful to develop the writing, just like translating, I might use, or describing language. Or, so the task involves a little bit of everything. So my name is Alberto, and I, I think I use communicative language teaching and immersion. I don't really know the difference between those two. I mean, probably I use both of them plus task-based task learning because I teach advanced writing skills too. So, and as a translation teacher, <coughs> I, I guess I have used grammar translation method at some point. Yeah, but you're teaching <laughs> translation. Definitely. <laughs> So yeah. Hi, my name is Joaquin Romero and I teach phonetics and phonology here and um, I don't think I use the communicative method because um, I'm not really interested in communicating. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm more interested in how students say things than what they actually say, uh, but I think someone has to do that. So. Um, I guess you got to pick one, maybe audio, lingual, audio, visual. This would be the methods that I use preferably. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I forgot one that's not there, and that's the comparative method. But as I very often use the, the, their L1 language to explain the L2, mm -hmm. not using translation, but using structures, so, use, so explaining grammar. Can you do that without using translation? Sure. Oh. Mm -hmm. Talking about grammar. What? So, so talking about structures. Okay, so you say, oh, that's a subject verb object language, and this is a Let's say. subject object verb language. <laughs> but if you don't give an example, it's. No, but it, no, I mean, I mean, it's some replies like So my students them. have to, so sometimes they have to write <laughs> papers, uh, mm -hmm. and they always, I always ask them to use a competitive approach, so they have to compare structures in both languages and I exp explicitly say that I'm not asking for translations because translation is done in some other subject. I'm asking for comparing structures. So the way you say something in one language and the way you say it in another language, which need not be a translation. Yeah, it's just the expression, let's say, expression of possibility in the two languages. So what do you use in one language, what do you use in the other language? Do you think, when a student answers that question, do you think they use mental translation? Um, mm -hmm. Probably. Okay.